<laughs> Dudleyville came back to Monday Night Raw. Someone got a good peek at Dolph Ziggler, maybe a little bit too much. And why did Sting come after Seth Rollins? Well, we're going to find out all that and more. Just also who beat the clock. We're going to talk about that on this week's Monday Night Raw Review Power by Google Hangouts. Prepare to work. Times NWA World's Heavyweight Champion Scrapper and Adam Pierce, and you're watching WGS TV. Greetings, everyone. You warp your way in from the tombs of you from to another installment of WGS TV right here on youtubecom slash Gamer. I am the Russell Gamer. Don't believe Billy Bujo. Today is September 1st, 2015. In particular, it's a Tuesday, and Tuesday is when normally we do the Monday Night Raw review. So we're going to go ahead and talk about that. And joining me on the Raw review of uh, on this video, guys and gals, you know him as the incomparable Lance Moss. Lance, how you doing? And like I'm like doing like Jimmy Superfly Snuka killing it. <laughs> oh my god. If you don't know what we're talking about, we'll save that discussion for another video on another day. But um what we're gonna talk about right now, guys, of course, is like Monday Night Raw and the opening with Sting. Sting would come out to kind of basically kind of reiterate a lot of the things we thought he was gonna say, and you know, make an appeal that, that Triple H is a better guy than Seth Rollins, kind of play to that and yada yada. It, it's basically something we've heard time in and time out when, when you get a like a legendary face against a, a a heel like that, wouldn't you say, Lance? Yeah, there's one difference between how Sting did his promo and how ninety percent of the other talent do it. His yeah. did not seem freaking scripted to all hell exactly because sting that's one of the things that made sting unique in the wrestling industry guys and gals is his ability to i kind of put him and seth rollins almost you know if you put them uh, you know just based on mic skills alone it would be a draw because both of them know what they're doing there's their promos you know you don't they don't feel scripted you know in a, in a sense and that's one of the things that really made Sting unique throughout the years. He's had that experience all those years um, in NWA, WCW, TNA, and of course WWE is not going to even recognize TNA. But uh, anyway, so on and so forth. You kind of get what I'm trying to say about that. Uh, opening matchup was a, another SummerSlam rematch: <sighs> Rusev and Dolph Ziggler, which once again did not end cleanly. It ended with Summer Rae interfering, causing a disqualification. Now. At this point in time, before the whole incident, and you know the incident I'm talking about, Lance, from the way it was playing out to me, it looked like the, they were playing up to the mixed tag match that we were all assuming that was probably going to happen at Night of Champions. Yeah, and then, well, sometimes you just got, I guess you got to say it because Joey Styles ain't here. Can't fight! Basically what happened, guys and gals, oh, by the way, we got a nice, nice shot of Lana's... Um, her, well, her skirt went up. I approve. And let, 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 let's just say, um, I think her mom was uh, glad as hell that she was wearing panties that night. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> notice I said her mama. That's all I'm saying. Um, but anyway, we would, we would transition to backstage. Uh, apparently, uh, there was a backstage promo with uh, Dom Ziggler. And as they, uh, they transitioned from the, the interview to Renee, Renee Young, who's going to pitch back to the to guys in the front, is the fact that you'd see in the background Summer Rae sneaking into Dolph Ziggler's uh, locker room area. More on that to come. Now, the Beat the Clock Challenge on this week's Monday Night Raw was to determine a new number one contender for the Divas Championship, and this opportunity was afforded to Paige, Charlotte, and, and Becky Lynch for uh, winning their matchup at SummerSlam. So Becky Lynch and Alicia Fox would be the first one. I'm not even going to mention the promo with Nikki Bella because I don't even think it's worth mentioning. Uh, especially, especially the Bellatron. Oh, my. I was like, really, really? Bellatron was the best name you could come up with it? Really? How about Tittytron? No, they can't say this, this is PG. Celine? Anyway. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> think about that. Think about that before you guys start randomly disliking the videos like you guys always do on here. Um, it was Becky Lynch and Alicia Fox, and the time was set, I believe. Oh, I should have wrote it in my notes, and I didn't. Wasn't it like three minutes and 41 seconds, something like that? Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, she locked on the disarmer on Alicia Fox, forcing her to uh, tap out. And a matchup that really, really surprised me was the Intercontinental Championship match between Ryback and the Big Show. Uh, fans still want to harp on, and I want to say upon like half of the IWC, they, they want to see uh, Big Show retire. Um, uh, like I said, you know, about 99% of the time, I don't agree with the IWC. I tend to formulate my own opinions through my own uh, objective reasoning and whatnot. And I, I, that's what I use to formulate my own opinions. I don't go on what other people say. That's why I like to have this channel as an open forum for everyone to have their opinions on here. You never go by with what one person says. You get both sides of the argument. That's why I respect John Cena, and Lance here pretty much does not. John Cena sucks. But here's the thing, though. <laughs> we don't respect each other enough to uh, voice our opinions, and we still remain friends. You know, we may have a difference of opinion, but, that again, that's just opinions. It doesn't mean that we're right. Then and, again, I will give him credit when it's due. Oh, yeah. And, and we'll talk a little bit more about that, uh, especially when it comes to later on the show. But again, Ryback and the Big Show Lance really surprised me into a really good match between these two. Yeah. I mean, Grant, I was kind of thinking about, I was kind of busy Monday, but yeah. Um, up next will be in the the next match in the Beat the Clock Challenge. Remember, the final set was like three minutes and 41 seconds. If I. If I remember correctly, uh, and again, I, I don't know why I didn't put it in my notes, but uh, it was Brie Bella and Charlotte, and Charlotte beat her with the natural selection in about a minute 40. Yeah, I think and, it was like a minute 41. Yeah, and the, the look Paige had on her face was just like, oh, shit. <laughs> yeah. Pa Paige sold that beautifully. I, I got to say that, you know, because it, it plays up to the angle that, oh, God, I got only a minute and 41 seconds to win my Beat the Clock Challenge. She did that beautifully and on time, and I and I like that about it. Kevin Owens and Cesaro. One of the things that's been that's been told to me on the the Facebook page, as I'm trying to bring them, because I actually did we did have some people sending in their uh, their comments for the Raw review, Lance, is the fact that they kind of view Cesaro now as becoming a jobber. I don't know if I would. I don't really. To me, a jobber is someone who just gets 100 completely squashed in a match. Basically, talent enhancement. You kind of get yeah. what I'm saying. And they get the way, turned into they get turned into Zack Ryder. Pretty much. However, I don't put Cesaro in that same vein, based on the fact that it's not basically just Cesaro is more than talent and enhancement. You know, just because the guy's losing. Almost every time you see him doesn't necessarily mean that he is talent enhancement, that he's a jobber. I don't agree with that. It, the way what I'm trying to say about uh, Cesaro is the fact that he's put, uh, come on strong and put on really entertaining, really good matches. And to me, if you have that ability to be over on the crowd and put together entertaining matches, to me, it, you could care less if they win or lose. If they go out there and their main purpose is to entertain the fans, that's what's better. That's what's best for business, in my opinion. And uh, Cesaro has really done that really well. Have you have you noticed, Lance, as of late, they kind of come up with a new name for the neutralizer, like the Gotch neutralizer or something like that? No. Then again, I don't. I tend not to listen to the commentary because that team sucks. Yeah. Which is kind of uh, one of the reasons why we do what we do uh, for pay per views yeah. on on here, so that way you guys can, don't have to suffer the burden of uh, bad commentary. But uh, it, it's something I've been hearing as of late about you know calling it the Gotch neutralizer or or something to that extent. I'm not exactly sure as to uh, what's called for that, but Kevin Owens would end up hitting the the pop up power bomb on uh, Cesaro to pick up the win. But I got to say, like I said before, it was a really, really entertaining match. And Cesaro, to me, Lance, it's not telling an enhancement. I think he deserves his spot. No, it's just the fact that WWE is trying to, well, some would say they're trying to get uh, bury him somewhere so they're trying to push him, but they're trying to elevate Owens. 
Yeah, the, Cesaro's not the only guy there. Like, I know that John Cena is not the only guy there. Like, everybody knows that Dean Ambrose is not the only guy there, and that Roman Reigns is not the only guy there. This is a company built around a number of people, not one person. Vince McMahon would probably say otherwise. But um, anyway, yeah. now, we would get our real first good look at Braun Strowman, or Braun Strowman, in the ring against Dean Ambrose. And before I give my opinion, Lance, I want to know, what did you think about it? I mean, uh, how did how did Strowman look to you? Because, uh, again, this is probably our first real look at what he could do in the ring. What was your opinion about that? Well, from what I've been able to learn of how green he literally is, he did a pr pretty good job. I mean, there were a few times you could tell where Dean was having to go, okay, dude, you're hurting me here. Like when he, he locked in whatever that, that choke thing was, you could see him actually nail him in the back. Like, okay, dude, you're choking me. But for somebody as green as goose shit, he he did pretty good. Yeah, yeah, I'm not saying this. Um, I, I was kind of impressed with what he, uh, you know, considering the the lack of experience he has, um, i.e., green as goose shit. I want to see what what else he can do. We need to see more of him in the ring and see what he can do. Now there are a lot of rumors out there about a third guy coming in uh, but a lot of people are even suspecting that wwe could just because he has a gimmick that would fit them baron corbin to be brought in for that and I, I, like i said these are just rumors you know just take them with a grain of salt that's all we can i would mark i would mark yeah but um anyway uh following that we would have Paige and sasha banks and by the way i don't even need to talk about what happened in the you know Strowman just kind of dominated ambos and reigns or reigns would try to come out and make the same and didn't really work out very well in their favor. And thanks to Luke Harper, it definitely didn't work out in their favor. Um, Paige and Sasha Banks for only a minute and 41 seconds. I can't, you kind of had to figure at some point that team bad was going to interfere or, or do something, especially after she, when she hit the rampage, uh, they pulled banks out of the ring and you kind of figured, okay, Paige is getting screwed here. She's not going to win. And you, from the reaction that I got when I looked at uh, at her after the match, is is the fact that could this be an angle where they break up Team PCB? That's what I was thinking because you see they're just either that or they're just starting to plant that little seed, and that's really the only thing people need nowadays to to start a swerve angle in a sense or breakup angle is that little seed, and I think we got that little seed last night on raw when page didn't win um again dudleyville came back to monday night raw in the form of the dudley boys taking on the new day first off what in the blue hell did austin creed aka xavier woods do to his goddamn hair what was that did he not just know. run his head through a dryer i don't know ask al sharpen um and then they bring out a table covered in bubble wrap I'm like, okay, seriously? You're just begging to get your ass kicked. Uh, the, the Dudleys would end up winning the match. Uh, by the way, has, has there been any reason announced? Does, does anybody know why that the primetime players have been on commentary more often than they've been in the ring as of late? I haven't heard anything. I, I got to say, though, I do enjoy them. You know, th That's probably one of the few times I actually turned WWE commentary up is when the primetime players are out there and they're making fun of JBL and, and Byron Saxon and sometimes Michael Cole, who kind of really deserves it. Uh, yeah. The Dudley boys would end up hitting the 3D on Kofi Kingston to pick up the win, and then Big E was about to go through the table. Xavier Woods uh, grabs him from the leg and, and drags him out of the ring to safety. All I'm going to say is that asshole deserved it for that ridiculous dancing he was doing during the match. Now, uh, Seth Rollins was on was on the lookout for his statue because apparently his statue, like Lance is getting a phone call right now, uh, his statue was missing. It's, uh, Seth Rollins was demanding to know what it is, and then he kind of made some inane remarks about you know that he's just as good as Triple H, which of course Stephanie McMahon didn't uh, take too well to uh, to heart. And then out would come John Cena, and just like I expected it to happen, and it happened, Lance, and I believe I talked about it last week, 
on last week's review. By the way, uh, uh, while well, I get to it when we get to it, but I kind of expected to John Cena to cash in his rematch clause at Night of Champions, forcing Seth Rollins to have basically more than one match at Night of Champions. Yeah, I honestly think this is where they're going to start building up for the Triple H Seth Rollins feud that's been uh, rumored for a damn long time. Yeah, I, I got to agree with you on that one. But um, anyway, guys and girls, we started a new thing last week here on the Raw Review. And that was for those of you who comment, the comment that we chose to like the best would be the raw comment of the week. As, as I try to bring up, there was a, there were a few kind of, as I try to, as I try to stop that, I apologize. Um, had a comment about well, one guy wanted to take a dump on a diva's chest. I'm not even going to. Hey, address. whatever, whatever gets him hard. Oh jeez, but um, but anyway, guys, uh, the the first uh, raw comment of the week is actually going to go to Cappuccino. This is what he said on last week's review. He said, "You fill your mouth with the IWC this, the IWC that, but I don't think the Divas debacle had much to do with the IWC at all. I believe it has more to do with the whole Divas Revolution thing falling flat on its face. These new girls were great in NXT, but somehow main roster booking has turned them boring." Maybe it has it has to do with Nikki holding the title until she surpasses AJ, uh, hashtag because CM Punk. But this Divas Revolution thing doesn't mean a thing. There's no storyline, no motivation, no substance to these matches. They're just matches. WWE needs to disband these stupid teams and start creating real feuds there if they really want these girls to succeed. And it says Cappuccino hit, it hit the nail right on the head. The angle with the Divas Revolution should have ended at SummerSlam. And yet it did not. It's continuing. But, however, we might have that little seed to start the, the process when it comes to Paige not winning the Beat the Clock Challenge. Very, very, very well could be. But um, anyway, guys and girls, like I said, uh, whenever we do a Raw review or SmackDown review or NXT review, when you guys have the chance to be to be officially recognized on here as the comment of the week, and of course the raw comment of the week goes to Cappuccino. So we are definitely appreciating you guys comment, and as well as commenting on this one for to be next week's raw comment of the week. But um, anyway, it's now time to go in our overall. Oh, well, before we do that, again, I keep jumping the gun here. It's kind of late at night. Uh, yeah, like, what am I doing a review late at night for? But we did have a review from a guy on Facebook, Dossie Chatham. He said, "As I love wrestling. If you couldn't tell, but today's product annoys the hell out of me. My biggest beef with it is that, for the most part, there's no story, especially when it's WWE's main roster, just simply matches with no setup. This makes it difficult to review because when I do, it just sounds like I'm shitting all over the product, and that makes people wonder why I watch it at all. Lana and Summer have a story, while not perfect, at least they have one. And it shows because the crowd is popping for them. I like Kevin Owens. He's a fantastic heel. And even though I'd like to see him face Daniel Bryan one day, if, he, if he's just going to have matches with Cesaro over and over again with very little story behind it, then why should I care? Yes, these are great matches, but I need a little bit more. I love the Wyatt family, but the same thing here. If they're just going to have matches with a skeleton of the shield over and over again, well, at least this one has a little bit more of a story with the new guy, but even that could use a little more. I want the Divas Revolution to be something, and hopefully with Charlotte's win, it can be. But man, that hasn't been what I want either. Constant tag matches. At least the Beat the Clock Challenge was different. And their story potential with possible dissension between Paige and Charlotte. Again, that's that little seed we were talking about, guys. Big Show and Ryback had a pretty decent big man match, but Ryback move on from Show and Miz? I need new opponents for him. I got to agree with them on that one. Um, I love New Day, taking their gimmick and just running with it. Fantastic, and Dudleys were, are always great. Hoping to see Dudleys versus Usos or Dudleys versus Wyatts in the future. I kind of wish they wouldn't have given the table spot. The, I kind of wish they wouldn't have given the table spot last week. But it's still working for me. I want to see the New Day go through another table. I'm also very happy with the U.S. title being defended at Night of Champions. I was very scared of it just being around Rollins' waist. It's not being wasted after all that work with Cena, Rusev, Owens, and the United States Challenge building that title up. 
the Sting mark in me wants Sting to get the accolade and win the title, but I also feel Rollins might as well hold that belt until Mania. So again, guys and girls, whenever we do uh, coverage on the Facebook page of a Raw, NXT, or SmackDown, you guys have the opportunity to send in your reviews on the Facebook page, and we will read them out loud here on the review. Now, overall score on Monday Night Raw this week was this Raw this week was actually quite a little bit better than last week's Monday Night Raw. And this one was actually watchable, and I think the fallout from SummerSlam last week wasn't watchable. Um, as far as best match of the night, I'm I'm honestly surprisingly I'm going to say this. And I think Lance is going to be shocked when I say this too, but I'm going to give it to Ryback and Big Show for two big men to have an entertaining match that actually drew attention. To me, that's a hell of a good thing. And they did, and they did that. It's a hell of a good thing to have a good, decent match between these two guys, which then proves that Big Show doesn't need to retire. Worst match of the night. Now, I've gotten so accustomed to saying that any Divas match on Monday Night Raw automatically constitutes the worst match of the night. But ever since they brought up the NXT Divas, I really can't say that. So my worst segment of the night is going to go to Xavier Woods' hair. Anyway, so officially my score on Monday Night Raw this week is going to be a 3.75 out of 5. Lance, over to you. Your overall score and your picks for best and worst match or segment of Monday Night Raw this week. I'm going to go with a 3.75 as well. My best match is going to be the Dean ambrose Brom stoker match because, well, I'm an Ambrose mark. And, well, worst segment, a bubble-wrapped table. <laughs> what? I think that's what you and everybody else who was watching this in North America had to say about that. A bubble wrap table. That's just absolutely insane. And your overall score? 3.75. Well, we don't know from you guys out there, the viewers and subscribers, your thoughts on Monday Night Raw this week. What are your overall scores? What are your picks for best and worst match or segment? of Monday Night Raw this week. We definitely want to know what you guys out there have to say. Be sure you put your comments in the comments section below. Don't forget to like and favorite this video, and don't forget anyone who comments has the the chance to be next week's Raw Comment of the Week. So if you want a chance to have a shout-out and be officially recognized on the review, you have to comment on the video to have that opportunity to be the Raw Comment of the Week. So, Lance, what can fans expect to see when they come visit your channel over on YouTube.com slash LanceMossTV? Album reviews, NASCAR discussion videos, Redneck Gorma cooking videos, musical equipment reviews. I go live every Wednesday. Tomorrow is going to be uh, on at 7 Central. Where I'm actually going to have, I think, most, if not all, of the hardcore crew on, and then whoever the hell else. Yeah, and well, hit me up on Facebook. It's at Lance Moss TV. No, that's Twitter. Anyway, subscribe if you haven't. WGS TV is on social media, guys, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can ask me questions. The links will be provided in the description box below. Don't forget to subscribe for more content like this and all of my Let's Plays right here on WGS TV. And, of course, I'll have two videos in the annotations at the end of this one for your convenience as well. So with that being said, guys and gals, for the incomparable Lance Moss from Lance Moss TV, I'm Russell Gamer. Then we'll be going to Goudreau saying we'll see you at the next Warp Zone. Giggity. Should we? Do it. There's so much heard about the bathhouses. My curiosity is going to make my head implode. I knew it. I knew he would. That guy had a fire in him. Sure as shit.